what is up everybody it's your boy JTM now I know you have been paying attention just like I have to the low rankings that all these so-called experts has been given our Buffalo Bills receiving core I mean man are they low I mean we are getting Rodney Dangerfield respect none at all but today we're going to examine every single receiver heading the camp and see if we can really get down to the bottom of this now in evaluating any NFL receiving core it always starts with who's the team's number one is now going to camp, obviously the Bills number one is the mismatch nightmare. Calvin Benjamin, 6'5", 240 pounds of straight nastiness. Calvin was acquired shortly before the trade deadline from Brandon Bean's old team, the Carolina Panthers. Unfortunately for Calvin, he was injured shortly after the acquisition. But while on the field, his impact was obvious. Calvin hauled in 16 catches for 235 yards at 13.6 yards a clip. He had to be game plan by any defense. There was no way you could lead this man in one-on-one -on -one coverage on the island because he would torch you. Going into this final season, Calvin is in the contract year and obviously his brother is going to get paid. So I'm expecting huge things from him to lead this receiving core. At number two is Isaiah Zay Jones. Now Jones was a highly touted receiver coming out of college mainly because he left Division I football as the all-time reception leader, hauling in 399 catches. For this reason, the Buffalo Bills drafted him very highly, taking him with the 37th pick in the second round of the 2017 draft. Jones came in with huge expectations, but may have been bumped up the depth chart sooner than many expected, following the trades of Sammy Watkins and the unexpected retirement of veteran Anquan Bolden. Jones struggled for the better part of his rookie season, only bringing in 27 catches for 316 yards. Following the season, there were reports that Jones may have been hampered by a shoulder injury, causing him to struggle. But unfortunately, this was not the only headline for Jones. Police were called to a California hotel room where Jones was reported as possibly being suicidal. His leg was injured in the account, which may have led to his most recent surgery on his knee. Jones will miss the spring, but when he returns, Big things I respect from Jones as the Bills brass are fully behind him. And he better be on the Zay game because the Bills are bringing in 13 receivers to camp. But I'm sure this kid will be successful, no doubt about it. Our number three receiver is veteran Jeremy Curley. What Jeremy Curley brings is eight years of NFL experience. And hopefully he can solidify the slot position. Because in 2017, the Bills receiving core did not have that slot position solidified. And as we know, the tight end and the slot receiver helped the quarterback position out tremendously. Now in 2017, Curley probably had his worst year as an NFL pro. He played in only eight games for the Jets before being suspended for PED, which he later blamed on Ghost. Let's see if Curley can stay away from the Ghost and we'll be okay. Now projected at number four receiver will probably be veteran Andre Holmes. We signed Andre in free agency in 2017 off the Oakland Raiders where he was buried in the depth chart. He came to Buffalo looking for an opportunity and he didn't quite get there. Andre only started two games and amassed 13 catches for 120 yards and three touchdowns. With the cap hit of $1.5 million, yeah, Andre better do something this year or he may not make the 53-man roster because I don't see us paying $1.5 million for a player that's playing special teams, especially carrying 13 receivers on the roster going into camp. So Andre better step it up or he's going to be looking for a new home. As we get deeper in this depth chart, this is when things are going to get ultra competitive and really tricky. But Slade at number 5 is a fan favorite from the preseason of 2017. Undrafted free agent from last year, Brandon Riley. Now Riley played in the preseason and him and Nate Peterman, they made a little bit of noise. And throughout the season, there was a lot of fans clamoring to get Brandon Riley on his roster even when we were down to 4 receivers healthy. Time will tell if Riley gonna step it up. Another veteran receiver looking to make this roster, who was also on the 2017 roster, was Rod Streeter. Now Rod was having a great 2017 preseason before a devastating knee injury put him out for the year. It was so great that he wasn't just looking to make the roster. He may have came out of the camp as the number two receiver. But as too often in his career, he was gone and off to the side and on the shelf. Rod's going to have to have another amazing preseason to make this roster. If he can do that, then we may get the 60 catch, 888 yard guy that's not that far removed from 2013. Sometimes it takes a little pipeline to get your foot in the door. 
And as we know, all you need is opportunities. This may be the case with our next receiver. 2018 draft pick, Austin Pro from North Carolina. Now Austin is the son of former NFL baller and Super Bowl champion, wide receiver Ricky Pro. But we think it may be Ricky Pro's relationship with Sean McDermott and Brandon Bean with the Carolina Panther organization that got him in the door here in Buffalo. Now Austin had a pretty good career at North Carolina. He's more of the smallish slot receiver being only 5'10", 190 pounds. He's a good route runner, he's good in tight spaces, and he has sure hands. Now that may bode well for his chances of making his team because his only competition in that position will probably be Jeremy Curley, who's an aging vet. But we'll see if he's like his daddy, because if he is, we may have a steal. Now after every NFL draft, it becomes undrafted free agency. And as fans, we all hope that we may get a player like a Fred Jackson that may emerge. This year, our mystery man may be wide receiver Robert Foster from Alabama. Now Robert is a 6'3 receiver who can run a 4'4 flat. The kid can simply fly. But does Robert have a leg up on the competition? Coming in with Brian Dabble who also came from Alabama being our offensive coordinator now? He just might. Let's not sleep on Robert's skills. In 2013, Robert Foster was the number one wide receiver recruit in the country. And he chose to go to Bama as a five star. Now, injuries early and a heavy running game may have slowed his career down a bit. So hopefully he has a whole bunch of untapped potential and he could be the next Bills great receiver. He's already turning heads in camp. Can you imagine a Josh Allen with that arm throwing down the field 80 yards to a Robert Foster? Every great defense, there comes a lot of times eh, sluggish offense. And that's been the case in Buffalo for some years now. So how do you counteract the sluggish offense? You get your return man. And that's just what the Bills may have done with Ray Ray McLeod. Now Ray Ray has some wheels on him. We got him late in the draft this year and he's looking to take that special teams position. Nothing against Brandon Tate, he was a decent return man. But with a defense like that and a sluggish offense as we've had, you better have some explosion because we got to put points on the board. Ray Ray is going to be looking to make this team as a return man. Well, he'll have some competition in Kaylin Clay, who's been traded here, traded away, and brought back again. And he's looking to stick around maybe this time. So we'll catch those two in a return race. We'll see who takes off with it. Rounding our receiving core and receiver race will be Quambre, Malachi Dupree, and Cam Phillips. All I know is these guys are going to fight like hell for these spots. Playing NFL is a dream, but what we think we do know is a part of the process is being a high character guy inside and outside that locker room. So these guys better impress while on the field, but also watch what they do off the field. Because we know, being McDermott, they watch it. They're always watching. One thing I can say about all these experts is that they're not always right. These could be the same expert that predicted us to go what, two and 14 last year, four and 12, five and 11, six and 10. And nobody predicted us to go nine and seven and break the 17 year drought. So in reality, you can take the experts notes and throw them all away. It means nothing. The game of football will be and forever will be played on the field. There is no projections that makes anything final. They are what they said they are projections and that's it but before i go i would love to give a couple shout outs shouts out to my tours designs ap artistry monster in the get up podcast the buffalo fanatics and most importantly to all the bills mafia let's get up let's go and let's talk about it i'm your host jtm hope you enjoyed it tune in Follow me on Twitter, follow me on Instagram, and follow me right here on YouTube. Let's go. I'm out. Peace.